Mo's Garage. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today is a beautiful evening here, as you can see. I don't know, maybe you can or can't see, but the sun's setting really nice, and uh, it's just temperatures starting to cool down a little bit. And uh, it's getting kind of comfortable in the garage here to start doing some projects. So we want to today. I'm going to I'm going to build a small shelf, um, and it's going to be simple, kind of ornate, uh, uh, made out of you know some angle iron and some wood here and it's just going to be a simple shelf basically six inches wide two foot long i'm uh, going to have a couple curly cues on it right here and made out of some one inch angle iron frame and i got a little bit of uh one inch by 316 strap right here and a beautiful piece of walnut that uh, we're going to trim down to fit inside of that and stain it up and uh, it's going to look really nice uh just a small simple little shelf and Give me a fun little project so let's get started okay so we're going to start out by uh cutting out the angle iron for the frame i've uh, got this over at my cutoff saw and uh we're gonna i'm cutting this out now i find it difficult sometimes to cut angle iron it's kind of awkward to set uh set up in the in the vise in there so i use a like a two inch uh piece of square tubing and that way i can uh clamp the angle iron to that and it makes it more secure for that I get a lot of people uh, asking me what type of pencil I use, and uh, this is just like a silver pencil. I got this, uh, get these things at the local metal, metal supply store. You know, they're about 50 cents or something, but uh, they really mark the metal nice and clear and clean, and you sharpen them just like a pencil, and you get a really fine line. I really like, uh, really like using them. It works out really good. And this is a carbide tip blade that we're using on this cutoff saw. I, I really, you know, this these things are amazing. Um, before, what I had was just a carborundum blade, I think it's called, on the on my cutoff saw. And, you know, it took forever to cut through things. And especially on angles, I could never get the angles, you know, true and square. But with this, uh, this carbide tip metal cutting blade, it just cuts through this metal like butter. And it uh, makes for a really good job. All right, so I got everything all cut out. Yeah, I'm got the angle iron brought back to my welding table and I'm um, just sort of checking the fit uh, with everything after I cut it all out. I uh, just want to be sure everything is nice and square and it's going to fit up good so uh, we can go ahead and weld everything out. Uh, so I've got everything all cut out and I'm over to uh, got everything uh, over to the vise and starting to mark things out. You know um, my new vise from Yoast the 750DI is really an incredible vise. This thing really secures uh, everything nice and nice and firm with very little pressure it locks everything into place it's uh, really a great vice to work with I'm uh, I'm glad I got that so I've marked out the angle iron uh, and I'm ready to cut this out now I'm using what's called a cope cut for my 45 degree angles this is something that I have just started using rather than uh, you know, cut everything out of the 45. This is just a different way to get a 90 degree angle. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm using here. It seems, it works pretty good. And I'm just using the, uh, I'm using a, uh, uh, angle grinder with a really thin cutoff blade. This thing is a, it's a Hilti five inch Hilti cutoff blade and it's about a 16th of an inch, uh, wide. And it just, it just really cuts through this metal really nice and clean. And, um, this is, uh, working out pretty good. All right, so now I've got the uh, these are the these are the, the the braces or the brackets for the back part of the frame and the mounting tabs, and you know I I put them together like this, and this is this is why it's important or not important that this is why I have so many grinders. Uh, you know I've got all the different wheels on the grinders, uh, you know cutting wheels and grinding wheels and flap discs and wire wheels that. Uh, you know, just so you don't have to spend a lot of time changing, changing the different wheels over. I just grab a different grinder. I, I don't know. I've I've had a uh, I made a video previously about all my different uh, Ryobi grinders that I have and all the different wheels that I have on them. Uh, so you know, I'm just rounding these things in a rounded fashion. I just want to make them. I just want to take the the sharp edges off and kind of give them a rounded over look, and uh, you know, so they look nice and smooth. It's just uh, part of the project, and uh, this is. Uh, the, one, the way I wanted to get it done. Okay, so this is the, actually the first time that I've been able to use my new Yoast uh, drill press vise, and I and I gotta say again, just like all Yoast products, uh, 
this this vise is incredible it just it's just very very little pressure and it just holds everything very securely uh, and this is uh, one of the reasons why I didn't mount it to right to my drill press or mount it because I like the ability to be able to just clamp something down and kind of slide it around into position where I need to. The vise is super heavy and as you can see I've kind of made this little flat top to my drill press so uh, I'm able to slide it in any position I want. And if I wanted to I could just put a clamp on there and clamp it down but uh, uh, hey this thing really works out really good. I'm just uh, drilling the holes in the rounded tabs right there. And uh, that's what we're doing in this part of the thing with the uh, with the drill press vise. Okay, we've got all our parts all cut out and fabbed out. Uh, we've got our little six inch uh, pieces here and our little tabs with the holes. Uh, got the curly cues right here. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, we've got our angle iron. Uh, what they call this, at least of what I've seen on the internet, is called like a cope cut, not a not a miter cut. Uh, I've done this a couple of times now. It's pretty interesting. I kind of like it. It uh, you know, makes for a perfect 45, and once it's welded out and grounded down, it, uh, it's a really clean fit. It's pretty cool. I like doing it. So, um, ready to start assembling everything. So, uh, let's put everything together. And uh, right there, fits pretty good. We'll get things welded out and put together. One little, one little, one little trick. I want to call it a trick, and I have to say I've never done it before, but as I was sitting here, I just thought about it, and I don't see, I know there's many ways of doing this, but I thought this was kind of interesting, I want to give it a try. Uh, we've got these corners that need to be welded perfectly square, and uh, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but uh, I thought maybe if I just take my square, clamp it to the table, run these things into the corners, flip them around, and be sure everything is nice and square, it's a quick and easy way to do it. So let's give that a try. All right, so now I'm just starting to uh, to assemble the the, the frame uh, for the shelf right here, and you know it's uh, we're just going to tack it. It's important to get things tacked on all four corners to keep everything nice and be sure everything is nice and square before you weld everything out, and it's a good uh, way to secure everything. I'm using my Power I Make 205 from Everlast, and I've got the settings set at about 18 volts and the wire speed. We're running probably about uh, 275 on that. Ah, that worked pretty cool. Yeah, I got a couple little splatter marks on it, but hey, that was pretty awesome. All right. Let's do it. So I've got the uh, frame all welded out and, and uh, I'm just uh, cleaning the welds up and I got a flap disc here I'm going around and smoothing everything out. Uh, I want this part of the project to be uh, nice and smooth. You know this is this this piece right here is, is going to be holding the shelf and the edges are going to be exposed and uh, I just want this part to be nice and smooth. We are going to um, going to have some other welds with the uh, curly cues and the mounting brackets. Those are going to be not ground down. Those are going to be exposed and uh, and you know making it look like a rustic uh, ornate uh, shelf. All right, so I'm starting to put the back braces and the tabs on, and uh, you know I had a little bit of a time with this uh, when I when I started doing it. I just started welding things up, and uh, you know I, the, everything wasn't to a 90 degree angle. Everything was kind of out of square, so I had to cut everything off, start over again. I uh, broke out, uh, you know, I got a little speed square there and, uh, you know, mag square down there. I did everything I could to get all the pieces nice and square, nice, as plum, nice and plumb as I could. My, uh, my welding table isn't completely flat or completely level, so it, it took quite a few times to get this thing to be just right. So it was kind of frustrating, but uh, eventually um, got everything trued up and welded up and uh, turned out pretty good. Okay, got everything all cleaned up right here. We got everything all welded out and uh, this thing turned out pretty nice. Um, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, not a lot of material, but you know what? It, it, it looks pretty nice. Uh, the only thing left to do here is to, um, what, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drill uh, six holes in the bottom to accept the piece of walnut that we're gonna put on the inside. I'm going to drill those out, uh, countersink them, and then uh, all we got left to do is cut out the walnut and get it stained and put it together. And I'm going to shoot a nice 
Uh, you know, I'm not going to paint this. I kind of like the uh, the the rustic look, the the metal to the wood look. So uh, I'm just going to shoot a couple coats of clear over top of this metal, and uh, you know what? I think it's going to look pretty nice. Let's get this drilled out, and then uh, we'll get the wood going. Okay, so we're right near the end of the project right here, and you can see that I've uh, flipped it upside down, and I'm just drilling the six holes. Uh, into the back of the bottom of the uh, bottom of the frame and I'm just using like a 3 16 drill bit uh, uh, Before we did that we measured everything out. We use a uh, center punch went around punched everything and uh, Now I got this 3 16 drill bit and we're drilling things through You know this metal is fairly soft so it uh, drills really good with a combination of a brand new sharp drill bit and then uh, I backed that up with a countersink bit that uh, kind of just gets in there and countersinks that uh, so the screws, when I screw them in, they fit flush to the back of the metal. I don't have anything sticking up. Okay, so I got everything all done here. Got everything all welded out uh, and cleaned up, and uh, everything turned out really nice. And uh, there you go. So one thing left to do is uh, get that piece of walnut cut out, get everything uh, stained, and finish this project up. Let's do it. Okay, so I got the wood cut out, a really nice piece of walnut right here, and uh, it fits in there pretty darn good and pretty nice and snug all the way around. But uh, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to I'm going to pop this out and uh, take my router and just do a like a uh, like a quarter rounding over bit, just round the edge slightly on both sides, and it's probably going to make it fit a lot better inside the bottom of this angle iron and make for a really smooth, uh, no sharp edges on the top of the wood. So go ahead and do that right now. Perfect. That is nice and smooth. Let's see how that fits in here. love it all right well there's only one last thing to do here uh we get this nice stain on here and uh put some clear coat on this metal and screw it down and we'll have a complete project let's do it all right so i got the piece of wall and all cut out and we've got the edges all rounded over and i've got my uh, milwaukee or orbital sander with a five inch uh, sanding disc on it and i'm using 220 to just go smooth everything out nice and smooth um you know before i uh, before i stain it it's it's uh, you know, it always it's always nice to get a nice smooth surface before you stain or paint. So I'm staining the wood right here, and I'm just using a like a dark walnut stain, and I've got this uh, you know, little applicating brush. These things are pretty cool. I actually bought the uh, a whole about 50 of these things, different sizes at uh, Harbor Freight, and they work excellent for applying stains and uh, polyurethanes, it paints whatever. It uh, they're you can't hardly go wrong. But uh, anyways, like I said, it's a polyurethane, um, what we're using for the clear coat. Uh, in that clear coat, the way I do that on the metal is it, it just, it makes it sh kind of shine a little bit. It's a, kind of a semi-gloss. Uh, it makes it shine, makes it look rustic. Uh, it, it really looks nice. It's a good finish. It really looks nice. Okay, well, it's been 24 hours, and I've got uh, I've got the stain all is completely dried, and, you know, the clear coat's completely dried, and, uh, and I got to say, this piece of walnut really turned out beautiful. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, really turned out beautiful with the uh, with the, st uh, the stain on there and the clear coat. Well, my last thing to do is just to go ahead and put it all together and attach a few screws to the back. As you can see, that fits in there really nice. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, flip this thing upside down. I'm gonna set it here on a couple towels so I don't uh, damage the surface. And I've already pre-drilled these holes and countersunk them on the back side. You guys saw that earlier, so I'm just going to pre-drill them here and put these screws in. We'll be done. Looks awesome. I really like this finish with the uh, clear coat on the on the on the raw metal and the stain uh, with the walnut. I 
I just think it's a, a nice rustic, rugged, um, ornate type of look. Uh, in terms, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about those curly cues. You know, everything came from my shop is what I had uh, laying around the scrap bin. Uh, this piece of walnut was left over from a job that I had done a few months ago. And uh, I was gonna make these little curly cues, cues right here, but you know, I went to my metal supply store and they had these things for $1.54 a piece. And uh, I gotta say, I, I couldn't pass that up. So I ended up buying about a dozen of these things. I'm sure I'm gonna be using them in other projects, but uh, um, anyways, hey, I think it looked really nice, turned out really good. And uh, I know it's a small, simple shelf, but uh, it's gonna get uh, put to good use. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. See you next time, Jimbo.